In this video, I'm going to give a brief introduction about how to use MIT App Inventor. Now, MIT App Inventor is a programming language specialized for app development um, that was created at MIT, and it's a block-based language, which means that you're not going to be writing outlines of code, rather you're going to be dragging um, graphics-based blocks. And because of that, it's a very nice language for kids or just anyone who's new to programming. So to start out, you are going to go to appinventor.mit.edu, and that takes you to this page here. To start building apps, click on the orange Create Apps button in the upper right. And from there, you'll need to sign in with a Gmail account. After you do that, you'll arrive at this page here. If you have not created any apps before, then this will all be blank. These are just apps that I've created in the past. And you can click on any of these here um, to see your old programs. Now to make a new app, you're going to click on the Start New Project button in the upper left. And you can enter the name of your project. You're going to want this to be descriptive enough so that you can figure out later on in the future what your app was. And it cannot have spaces, so a nice way of dealing with that is either putting underscores between words or having a, um, a capitalization pattern. So I'll call mine new app. And it will automatically bring up this page. Now this looks a little overwhelming at first, but let's break it down. Now right here we have the viewer panel. This shows us what our app screen currently looks like. And it's modeled on an Android phone. Now currently it's all white here, and that's because that we haven't added anything to the app yet, but that will change later. Now on the left is what's called our palette, and this shows all these different things that we can add to our screen. The thing that will be used most often is user interface, and user interface refers to the design of the screen, or what's what the user can see on it. And there are a lot of things here that should look familiar. We have something like a button, a checkbox, a date picker, which is a way of selecting a date, image, label, and other similar things. So I'm just going to pick button, and to add that to my screen, you just need to drag and drop it. And now this has appeared on our screen. Something else that's changed is that if we look under the components pane, we now also have this thing called button one here. Now clicking on that, we can look under the properties panel, and this shows us a number of properties of this user interface element that we can change. One thing that we can change is the background color, so I can change that to blue, and there are a lot of other things I can change here. I can bold the font, I can italicize the font, I can change the font size and make it bigger. Um, I can ch change what's actually in the text, so I can say click there. And depending on what the item is that's on your screen, you're going to have a different set of properties that you can tweak. These are just the ones for buttons. Now continuing on the left, you'll notice that there are these little question marks here, and this will come in handy a lot because these give you a brief overview of what that thing is. So say I have no idea what it means by list picker. I can click on this and it will tell me what it is. And if I want more information, I can click on this link here. And this takes me to the official MIT documentation. So it will give me all the different properties. Um, so you remember seeing those for the button. Um, a brief overview and other useful pieces of information. Now user interface elements aren't the only thing in my palette that I can add to the screen. There are a few other things as well. There's layout, so that allows us to control the placement of our elements on our screen. Um, again, if you want to learn about these, you can just click the little question marks there. There's media, and this deals with things like pictures and videos and sound. There's drawing and animation, so um, this if you want any sort of graphics on your app. Sensors are things like location sensor, orientation sensor, proximity sensor. Then we have social, so you can pick an email, a contact, a phone number. There's storage. Um, this will be important later with more complex apps. You'll want some way of storing data, and you can do that using TinyDB here. There's connectivity. Um, this will come in handy as well. And then the last three you don't really need to worry about unless you're working with LEGO Mindstorms. Now what I've showed you here is actually only half of um, the MIT App Inventor interface. You'll see that there's this option here where we can click on either designer or blocks. Right now we're in the designer option, meaning we're designing our screen, but we can't actually do any programming here. The programming comes in the blocks panel. So if you click on that, that brings up this entirely new screen. Um, the majority of the screen is taken up by the viewer. This shows where our code will go. So right now it's white. 
but once we drag code blocks, um, we'll start having a more complicated layout here. The other thing going on here is blocks, and um, blocks are code segments in App Inventor. There are a few different types. You'll see there's built in here, and there are a whole bunch of different categories. We have, for example, math, which deals with math-related blocks like numbers, addition, multiplication, etc. Um, there's text, so we can split text, we can replace things in text, and variables, so this is a way of storing values. Now there's also blocks that are specific to certain elements on your screen. So for example, with our button, there are a number of blocks that have to do with that button. So there's this block that says when button one dot clicks, so we can make something happen when our button gets clicked. We can change the background color, we can change the font bolding, um, and a whole bunch of other things there. And similarly to how we dragged elements to our user interface, here we can drag blocks to our screen, and then we can build our code from there. To delete code, you just need to drag it to the trash can in the lower right. The last thing here is that we can have multiple screens to our app. You'll see that there's this add screen button up here. So if we want an additional screen, we can click that, enter in the screen name, and um, that will appear. And then to navigate between screens, you use this little drop down menu here. The other thing is that we have this panel up here. We have help, so this has tutorials, troubleshooting, forms, so that's a good resource if you're ever stuck. There's build, so this allows us to download um, a form of our app that can then be put on phones permanently. There's connect. AI companion is if you have an Android device with the AI companion app installed. And with that, you can click this, either put in the code or scan the barcode, and your app will appear on your phone. There are a few other options here that are used less frequently. There's the emulator, so this is a way of running the code directly on your computer, and there's the USB method. Um, this reset connection here, I use this often when I'm using the AI companion app because sometimes the connection gets a little funky and you just need to reset it. The other thing here is that we have projects, so this has a whole bunch of options relating to your overall project. We have import projects, so this is useful if you're maybe looking at someone else's code or you're starting off with a template. In that case, you can import your project here. There's also just the My Projects link, and if you click that, that brings you back to your original pane. So I hope that was helpful.